As the U.S. and China prepare to build permanent bases on the moon, a bigger question emerges. Can humanity explore peacefully, or are we heading for the first conflict off Earth? The moon's south pole is the prize. Why? Because it holds something more valuable than gold, water ice. Ice that can become drinking water, oxygen, and even rocket fuel. But here's the problem, these resources are limited. Only a handful of craters stay permanently shadowed, preserving ancient ice. And only a few flat regions nearby are ideal for landers and bases. That scarcity could trigger tension between nations. So how do we prevent a lunar land grab? International treaties exist, like the 1967 Outer Space Treaty, declaring that no one can own the moon. Space is a commons, open to all. But things get messy when resources enter the picture. The U.S. dawes led Artemis Accords allow countries to extract lunar materials as long as they don't claim the land. They even introduce safety zones to avoid interference. Some nations see those zones as responsible, others see them as sneaky ways to establish territory. At the same time, there's the 1979 Moon Agreement, a treaty that promotes transparency, cooperation, and shared management of lunar resources. But here's the catch. The US, China, and Russia never signed it. The three biggest players aren't on board. Still, a cooperative future isn't impossible. Countries like Thailand and Senegal have joined both the Artemis Accords and China's Lunar Base Project, acting as diplomatic bridges. NASA's Artemis Base Camp and China's Ilorus may eventually learn to coexist. If humanity is going to become a multi-planet species, we need more than rockets. We need diplomacy. Because the next giant leap isn't just stepping onto the moon, it's learning to share it.